What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna to be talking about type and specifically establishing that typographic visual hierarchy uh, in four different scenarios where I show you a bunch of iterations uh, that would be acceptable for that type of visual hierarchy. So if we look at the monitor, this is gonna be our first example. This will be our second example. As you can see, you're not really sure where you should look first because it lacks visual hierarchy because the elements are not styled differently from each other. Here's the third example. And then here is the final, like a uh, uh, kind of like a blog page uh, article. And from that, you're going to be able to see as I work through each one of these, how to establish that visual hierarchy, because if these are one of the design fundamentals that if you don't get right it, and everything else is correct, it still just makes your project look like crap and amateur. All right. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, wait one second. If you're interested in UI design, you might be interested in front end development as well. If that's the case, you should definitely check out the sponsor of this video, scrimba.com. They recently launched their front end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more. As you see, it's over 75 hours of awesome content. There are hundreds of interactive coding challenges and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front end developer. So make sure you click on the top link here in the YouTube description to get access to the front end development career path starting now. All right, we are here with our first example and this is basically what you would find typically, uh, I know it's not quite finished, but just a website footer. Um, and it's a footer navigation, typical pattern that you see here. So. Ask yourself, what is the issue with this particular example? Well, when we're dealing with this type of type and the purpose of this video, the topic, we have to ask ourselves uh, how many uh, different, in terms of like semantically different pieces of type do we have that are neighboring each other? Um, and in this case, we have two, right? So we have the actual navigation right here, and then we have labels or titles above each one to give it context about, you know, what this particular nav and this sub nav you know are all about uh, and so the problem is they're styled exactly the same uh, and so while we do have white space separating this link from that otherwise it would look all just like you know this a, a typical just a single uh, vertical navigation with not without any type of labels I uh, this is with with that only the being the only difference it's still not enough and it's still not clear enough to the visitor. So you have several different, we have many ways to fix this. There's not just like one universally best method. Um, and so I'll go over a couple in this example so that we have some uh, idea. So um, what I'm gonna do is just replicate these just so that I, we can see all these differently. Now, one such way of creating separation between type is to take whatever you need in terms of your type, whatever the same here, and then just make it bold. So we're talking about font weight. So making this bold immediately improves the design overall. Uh, and it also just makes sense as well. It's a UX thing. It's easier for the visitor to understand that these are different than these down here. Otherwise, when it looks like this, it's just, it, it feels like it lacks structure. So this is one perfect way of doing it. All you have to do is make it bold in this context. You'll see in I, another example where just making something bold won't be enough. But in this context, it's perfectly fine. Now, what if though, I, we wanted to also create a further separation of visual hierarchy? Um, we could probably make these a little bit larger and maybe move them a little bit up. And this would be fine as well. Um, I don't think you can say objectively, although I have to say, I kind of do like this one a bit, a bit better. I think all you need here is to make these bold. Um, this kind of looks strange if they're kind of, if they're large. Now, sometimes you can experiment and maybe it would be uh, fine rather uh, if you made them regular or maybe you made them light. So you could do that. Um, let's give another example. You can also use color and contrast um, to enforce that visual hierarchy. So we could take the background color here and just make it uh, kind of like a mid-tone. And this works as well, because you create a further, a further separation. We're changing one more element um, differently about themselves. Now you also, if I come back this way, could take all these and we can underline them. So if we choose underline, 
That's one element of separation, but I still think it would be best if we took these and made them bold in this regard. So that works. This works. I'm not too much a fan of this one. Maybe if we made them less contrast, uh, it would be a little bit better. And this one works as well. So as you can see, you have options. And that's kind of like the introductory uh, example about what visual hierarchy is. So in this case, it's kind of just like a feature section you might find on a landing page. Uh, we have three different elements. We have a headline or a subheadline. These could be either or, depending on what your context is. We're going to say this is a subheadline or a subheading, and this is the actual headline, and then this is a description. So when all three of them look the same, you're not really sure where to look first. Doesn't make sense, uh, and it doesn't look good either. So let's uh, work with this. And so I'll show you a few common ways to deal with the type in this context, because again, you have options. So immediately, I'm gonna drop this down because I know this right here, I wanna make that bigger. That's the title, that's the thing that's most important, so we make it stand out the most. So we can uh, bump this up, there we go, that works. Now, this gives you a certain element of that visual hierarchy that we like, but still, these both being styled exactly the same, we can improve it. Uh, we can furthermore, we can change this to bold, and we even more so we reinforce that visual hierarchy because if I, sh I show you an example I, or a side-by-side -side comparison, we make this one regular. You see your eyes just drawn to this one much more. Why? Because it's bold and it's thick. You, you recognize it more so. Uh, so that's a very important element uh, to understand. So additionally, uh, let's go to this one. Uh, so we want to change this up, this little subheading. In this context, there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, we could change the font size to maybe go match between the size of this and this. I mean, I'm not sure what it'll look like. That's fine. We could tell that this is noticeably different than the description text, but not too big to where it's competing uh, for, I guess you could say, the eye. Um, as compared to this title right here. So, because if we go too big, now they're kind of too similar. So there's definitely a, 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 a balance here that you will develop as you gain more experience. Um, so this works. Uh, we could also take this, I uh, maybe we'll replicate this. My computer's being a little bit slow today. And then we could take this right here, um, this, t this color, We'll grab the background sitting on and we'll add, I uh, must make it dark. So we could add tone, kind of like maybe right in there. You know, you don't want to go too light because then you're going to run into accessibility issues. Uh, so we want to be like right around here, probably at the lightest. But that creates a further separation between the type. If we compare this compared to that, um, I want to show you an alternative uh, idea when it comes to these subheadings because uh, you can. We we'll make them a little bit more unique from the other text, which can further help uh, reinforce visual hierarchy. So what we could do is another uh, one thing I see often is I so it says the best demos, the best demos. Uh, we'll make it quite small, but and this this could be way uh, this could be fine right here um, as is. Uh, or we can, can we can further making it we can keep on making it different. Sorry, I'm not talking correctly today. Uh, we're gonna go bold. Um, we'll have a little bit of extended uh, tracking, which is letter spacing. And we could also just get this color it's sitting on. That could work. It is a little bit small, so you, it, you don't obviously don't wanna go too small, otherwise people won't be able to read it and then it becomes worthless. So we could see it's quite a bit of a different dynamic here. Another thing that we could do is let's bring that back in just to regular tracking here and then we'll create a little container around it so we'll drop that underneath let's get it to a proper color grays never work well sitting on anything with color that has hue in it by the way um, just a pro tip there uh, maybe we'll come out like here and then we'll take this type make it white. Now, when it comes to um, putting text in containers like this or buttons like this, you wanna make sure you have equal white space all around, top, right, bottom, left, 
you get the point. So that's I'm gonna I'm just eyeballing it here just to get a rough estimation. And that's close enough. So I see people do this as well. You can give these, I like a look of a little bit of like a rounded rectangle. You could do this. I'm gonna do one more example. And then you could also do this. So we could take this and just go less contrast. And then we'll take this and just go black. Or you don't have to go black. You could go, um, again, something like here. You could do this as well. So this is really a good example of a uh, visual typographic or typographic visual hierarchy um, that's really where each element is really uh, kind of defined in its own space. So we go from this, which is it's terrible, right? Then we make our way down to this. Now, of course, you could easily go with this. This would work as well. Uh, so, you know, there's you have a lot of options. Let's take a look at it, uh, another one. You see this type of section in UI pages. Uh, usually, you'll find it the section when it's right underneath uh, the hero section or the main section before you start to scroll down. Uh, but we have a few things happening here. We just have a title, description, and then a, a whole section heading. So, how would the visual hierarchy here um, look? Well, of course, like I said, you have options. Uh, typically. The subheading will be larger, although it doesn't always have to be larger. We'll take these elements and we could probably make them larger and bold. All right, get those centered up. We can make this bold as well. Don't necessarily have to. A lot of this is, you know, subjective preference sort of stuff. So we go from this to this, which is definitely more, you know, on the proper end of uh, visual hierarchy. But we can also, like I said, we can use color. I like to grab this color and we'll just go up here. And this is what I would consider to be quite well defined uh, in terms of that typographic visual hierarchy. And I'll do one more. We just kind of have an example, just a plain white page, uh, like you would see like a blog page uh, or like an article. So what's the most important element I, you have to ask yourself? Well, in this context, it's gonna be the title because it's the thing that informs users about what this whole thing's about. So we're gonna make it larger. We're gonna make it the thing that people, that their eyes will see first. They'll be uh, uh, are drawn to. So somewhere right around here would be fine in the context of this size and, and uh, our existing fonts here. Uh, we can make it bold as well. You don't have to. You could even make it light if you wanted to uh, or even uh, real thin. Uh, again, it's entirely up to what your aesthetic, uh, you know, what your preferences are for the brand and such. Um, so I'm just gonna make it bold. And then we have another, th we have a couple things happening here. There's a breadcrumb navigation. Um, Maybe make that a little bit more obvious. I'll just put a little circle between them. There we go. Uh, and then we have a date, and then we have the actual paragraph, the actual content. Um, so what I would say is we have to make these obvious that these are clickable. You could put them like in a containerized button with a background behind it, or you could make them uh, just underline. Underline's completely fine. I people will universally recognize it as something they can click for sure. So you can't go wrong with underlines. Uh, so if I come here and we select that, we'll choose an underline. That's already improved right there. So really just by making those two changes, oh no, did I get rid of the original one? I did. So yeah, this is pretty good in and of itself, but I would say the, t the, the, the actual date should be changed in some way. So you could just lower the opacity. I'll just make it gray. You wouldn't wanna go less uh, than that in terms of contrast. People would have a hard time reading it, but we can also make it bold. It's all about making these things appear different from each other. So bold. Now, if you make something bold, you can actually uh, afford to make it less contrast or if it's really large. 
Now, if there's a particular color scheme associated with uh, the page right here, we're just monochromatic, you can work that into your links as well to make them different. So um, we can come out here. And there we go. We can now see all this stuff is quite a bit different from each other. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. Definitely check out designcourse.com. It's gonna be launching officially in January 4th, 2020. And you go there right now, enter your email, and that way you will be reminded when it fully launches. It's basically my big project where you're gonna learn how to design amazing user interfaces with my help personally. All right, I'll see you all soon, goodbye.